can athletes rely on metabolic water for hydration or is water intake necessary after a point? Depends on what you're doing. You know, if you're just lifting weights, um, I find that I don't require any water. If you're just walking around, I don't um, require water. But if you're out jogging, you're going to be, and, and in heat, you're going to be definitely losing uh, and then using some water with salt, yep, will be needed. So you've got to be careful. Look, there's a rate at which metabolic water is produced. Beyond, If you push the physiology beyond that rate, yeah, it's going to, you know, if you take a look at tribal people, they don't use water, but they walk um, in arid environments. And then it's just the last small amount of time that they will actually sprint to make the kill. So that's usually how it works. And you're not gonna you're not gonna sweat to the same level. And also the more you drink, you can actually increase, you know, you you're actually undermining your antidiuretic hormones. So once your antidiuretic hormones get upregulated, um, you tend to lose less um, moisture. Also, if you're eating a species-appropriate diet, you should be getting enough um, niacin in it. And and niacin, you know, it's one of its um, metabolites, which is nicotinamide, that you can actually buy it in a supplement. It's quite cheap. That actually maintains hydration in the skin. So it's really that people are eating inappropriately and doing things possibly in excess of what normal physiology and yeah they can lower their hydration sort of uh, yeah they could complicate things it also has a lot to do i've actually done sort of working and walking and doing some like a bit of jogging in between just to test the whole theory and i didn't find myself dehydrating you know, in any substantial way. But that wasn't, you know, I mean, it's an end of one experiment. It wasn't substantial. It was short duration. Um, but long duration, yeah, I, I suspect that, you know, we're pushing the physiology to that level where it's going to be much harder. So, yeah, it's those are those are difficult ones to um to answer because the physiology of the way people's physiological responses happen in a more tribal ancestral sort of setting is a bit different than our modern day approaches we've got the extremes in the modern world of too much exercise or too little you know the you know the couch potato the sedentary lifestyle and then the excess amount of physical activity which when you look at na when you look at the natural world, no animal, no species in nature deliberately exerts excess, you know, puts excess effort because the the food supply is unreliable. The amount of energy around is limited, and you have to work for it hard. You know, this is why even our ancestors when we look at bones of uh, hunter and gatherers, we sometimes find certain marks on them. These stress marks indicate periods where they didn't really have much food. They were struggling to get enough uh, um, energy, um, food energy and uh, nutrition in general. So it's only the modern world where we've been able to industrialize food production to such a level where we can produce massive amounts. And so humans, logically, what did they use to, I'll give you an example. In the past, if you went to a doctor and you're underweight, what would they tell you? They'd tell you, go out and exercise to increase your hunger because exercising makes you hungrier. So they knew it back then. They don't know it now. It's just the reverse. They've They've turned reality upside down, but that's what it was in the past. So, yeah. So it's really down to the physical activity, and that's probably a better question to ask somebody like Bart Kay, who is a sports physiologist, 
and really knows the sort of the upper limits in in that regard. Um, Steve Finney and Jeff Volker have done a lot of research in the area. They're pretty good in that in that regard as well. You know, my knowledge is sort of generalised knowledge when it comes to hydration, um, and sports physiology knowledge is sort of generalised. It's not something that I specialised in in that regard. Um, but I do know enough to be dangerous in a sense. But, uh, you know, so I'm always a bit reluctant to give any specific advice when it comes to sports um, to athletes because it's just um, a much more complicated field um, and, so, and certain preparation people need to do when it comes to bodybuilding type stuff. I'd, I usually recommend Jonathan. Um, so people like that that have that have really done it that have been involved heavily i mean jonathan you know sort of comes to me for some of the science some of the some of the other some of the other stuff but you know he does a carnival diet and does a lot of body composition and um stuff of that sort and he's pretty good at that he's got more experience because he's got clients when you've got clients and you're seeing them every day and you're dealing with their problems and all that you can actually acquire a certain level of sensitivity and nuancing. Um, I deal with other things, which is more nutritional and um, general health issues that people have because I deal a lot with that sort of stuff and I've dealt a lot with my own. I've you know, become very knowledgeable and sensitive to understanding some of the nuancing that happens in that space. So I'm a bit better in that regard. So it's probably a better question to ask those two um, fellows in that regard but generally when it comes to hydration as far as i'm concerned from my knowledge looking at um laszlo laszlo borsch um research on deuterium and stuff like that it's quite clear that uh, we don't want to be putting too much deuterium in our bodies and we also don't want to be over hydrating as well and we look at you know when we, i look at ancestral populations they don't you know I've got a video where I've done conversations with, with Mary about the Huds and the Maasai and all that, and she quite clearly had gone out with them. They were carrying a whole lot of water. Those people were not carrying any water because they were hydrating with fat, but also they were overexerting themselves. And if they need some hydration, they use low deuterium sources, which is from leaves, and they actually were squeezing leaves to get some moisture out of them. And it was just showing how they did it. But primarily, if you've got your antidiuretic hormones upregulated, and and that's by not eating, drinking excessive fluids, and you've uh, you, so you've trained your body in that way, and you're getting hydration primarily from um, from food, and because there is moisture in in all food when you don't overcook it. In particular meat's got a lot of um, a, a lot of water in it as well, like many other things. Plus, if you're, you know, also using utilizing fat to produce um, metabolic water, all those sort of things will actually keep you relatively hydrated. Um, the problem is in our modern world, we consume too many carbohydrates, which make us thirsty, and we also consume far too much water and dilute cause ourselves electrolyte issues and all sorts of things like that so i'm reluctant to promote high hydration via water um you should try and become fat adapted and try and focus on getting hydration from actual fat in that regard but when it comes to sort of the exact amounts to put in from from water and fat in under certain physiological conditions um, those areas are not not an area that I specialise. So I suspect at a certain at a certain level of physical exertion, you will lose a certain level of um, hydration, and then there will be a requirement of a certain amount. Um, where exactly that is, I don't even think the literature is very clear on that and very good either. So I I think even our science is a bit poor on that. It's technically take a whole lot of electrolytes and keep on guzzling down water. That's the sort of um, approach by most average sports physiologists that are pumping, pumping you full of um, uh, 
you know, glucose as well at the same time. So the research is pretty poor. I look at sort of what are tribal people doing, how they're hunting and stuff like that, and what is their um, exertion. And that tells me more. And, I, and from my own experience, playing around with hydration and lowering the amount of intake, I've noticed my antidiuretic hormones are regulating. I need less salt and um, I'm able to cope much better. So with, you know, walking quite some distances sometimes in the sun with zero hydration. When I get up, I go for a long walk, a couple of hours sometimes, and I've had no water in the morning when I've woken up and no water when I've got back. And in many cases, I'm not dehydrated at all, you know. I very rarely do I get dehydrated now, where before when I was guzzling water, I was getting dehydrated constantly. So I think there is something there in terms of the way all animals in nature, only when they overexert themselves um, will they actually seek water. Otherwise, they don't. And my urine um, is is fine. In many cases, I'm still... I still don't understand. It's probably the coffee. It's probably the, the two cups of coffee that I drink a day where I'm getting some extra hydration that's keeping my um, external for hydration, that's keeping my um, urine slightly lighter in colour. When I wasn't doing any coffee, nothing, I was really strict, my urine was becoming a bit yellower. And it became consistent like that for a number of weeks. So I had no problem. So it was quite clear to me that it's a non issue that, that as long as you don't have any underlying condition, health condition or whatever, your kidneys are going to be functioning. 